After scoring a homecoming victory over North Harden last night, the Bears are back at it again today. Coach Vance Sullivan brings his Gallatin County Wildcats to Taylorsville to do battle with the Bears. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Taylorsville, Kentucky, on the campus of Spencer County High School, alongside the best color commentator in high school sports today, John Hutchins. I am Bo Bruner, and we're here with GHP Sports to bring you another evening of Bears basketball. I'm going to roll up my pant legs. You're getting a little bit crap up here on the stage, I think, but John, yeah, I appreciate it. Spencer County's won five games in a row since their loss to Collins two weeks ago, and they've only got tonight's game before number five, North Oldham, comes to town Tuesday night. Yeah, which will be a huge matchup for the Bears. And this is a great opportunity for them to see a different team, a team that's going to attack differently offensively, and, and it's going to, should be a real exciting game for the Bears, especially coming off homecoming last night. You know, you wonder about tired legs, and, and this is going to be something that's going to tell the tale. Spencer County and Gallatin County, John, uh, have played five times since 2004. Spencer yep. County has won all five. The last time they played was two years ago at Gallatin County. Sam Conley led the Bears that night, 16 points and seven rebounds, and Jake Whitlock had 10. So uh, we're having a uh, little bit of issues tonight, so uh, John and I are going to just keep on running here with it. But uh, we're going to talk about these Gallatin County Wildcats. Yep. But uh, before we do, John, we want to give a shout-out to our boys' JV team. Yes, who we, uh, do. we found out here sh uh, just a few minutes ago this morning. They traveled over to Anderson County, won a couple ball games over there, and won the 30th district tournament for JV team. Yeah, was able to knock off Collins there in the last, the final game of that, 33-25. to 25. So congratulations to those JV boys. I know during the JV game here, if you didn't get an opportunity to see it, Spencer County won 45 to 39, which they had to come back to. We, from what we understand, as far as 12 points down in that game, to come back and get that six-point win. But it was a JV team that was, you know, a lot of what was on the floor was freshmen. You know, Coach yeah. Burns, you know, wanting to be able to rest some of the JV players that dress for varsity after playing two games this morning, and so it wasn't even our full-strength JV team, and them able to pick up the big win. So we can uh, we can safely say, John, from what we've seen uh, this morning and what or what we've seen here just a few minutes ago, yeah. and what we didn't see this morning, future's still pretty bright here at Spencer County High School as far as the boys go. It is, and, and it's one of those things where Coach Burns has been able to build a program from the bottom up, where they're funneling kids into the program from the younger you know ages and from middle school to be able to bring them up into high school, just a lot like Coach Marksbury is able to do with the football program. And, and it's when you get programs like that to where you can build that groundwork from the bottom up, it makes all the difference in the world to the, the level of play and the talent and the victories that you'll have at the high school level. Tonight the Bears will be taking on the Wildcats of Gallatin County. They have a 10-13 and 13 record on the season, John, and uh, are, uh, they're coached by Vance Sullivan. Yep. Coach Sullivan is in his second year at Gallatin County, has a career record of 27 and 26. Now, before that, John, he was uh, uh, the assistant coach, the JV coach yep. of uh, Gallatin County for three years. And then the three years before that, he was the freshman coach. So this is not a stranger to the program. He's no. been in the program yep. now for eight years and uh, followed along, in, which is a very good tradition of uh, high school basketball at Gallatin County. Well, and it shows a lot of faith by the uh, athletic administration at, the, uh, at Gallatin County High School the faith that they have in Coach Sullivan to see him come up through these different levels and continue to, to advance from the freshman coach to the JV coach. And, and then when given the opportunity to be able to move up to varsity, you know, that, that was the name on the list. That was the list. That's who they wanted was Van Sullivan. He does come with a uh, coaching pedigree, John, not only his eight years here, but his dad, Dan Sullivan, has held the head coaching jobs at Walton, Verona, Campbell County, and now holds the job at Ludlow. So, uh, it's uh he comes from a coaching tree, yep. uh, probably raised up in a gym somewhere, a little gym rat somewhere, and, yep. and uh, he's continued on and uh, started his own career here at Gallatin County. Now, Coach Sullivan, he's got a last year's team, John. He was pretty set going into the season. Uh, yep. Had a team full of seniors, and now uh, this year he's got a little bit of a rebuilding job to do. That senior leading leading team is gone, yep. and. Uh, he has to figure out how to replace 77% of his scoring, 86% of his rebounding graduated in May. Yeah, and this year he only has one senior on the court, and, and that senior 
you know, doesn't really contribute a lot. I believe I saw it was one one point or 1.5 points a game, I believe, is what was on the stats from that senior, Ethan Alexander. And so they, they end up uh, really bringing in a lot of youth, a lot of talent that's come up through their program from that JV program that, you know, Coach Sullivan was able to run before. And so these are players that not only know Coach Sullivan because of being there, but he's coached a lot of these boys. Uh, this year, their number of new faces going to be in the lineup, John. Junior Kellen Dossett yep. is the only returning starter from last year's team. He's averaging 18.7, 5.1 rebounds a game. Excellent shooter from outside the arc, but he's also very good at drawing the contact and getting to the line. Yeah, he is. And when he gets to the line, 75.5% from the free throw line. So it's something the Bears are going to have to watch out for him. You know, obviously he is that threat from outside the arc, but too many times if you're late to your assignment on defense trying to get in front of him, you're moving one direction and it's nothing for him to cut the other way and be able to get to the basket. Sophomore transfer Matt Griffin started last season as a freshman under Sullivan's dad at Ludlow, and yeah. now he's here at Gallatin County. 15.7 points, 4.2 rebounds a game. He's quick, shifty guard. Sees the floor extremely well, John, and it will probably be the primary ball handler for this Wildcats squad. Yeah, and again, another good three-point shooter for these Wildcats, 39.8% from three-point, and, you know, somebody that the Bears are going to have to watch. You know, we see so many times these Spencer County Bears and able to fire up these three-pointers. We talk about Earhart and Cox when they're in the gym, they're in range, and, and it's going to be a little bit of a mirror image when it comes to guard play and what they're going to have to deal with tonight. Sophomore Andrew Brinker, 12 points, 5.7 rebounds a game. Played in most of the games last year. Came off the bench for Coach Sullivan. Coach Sullivan says he has grown and can score at all three levels. Yeah, oh, definitely. And, you know, somebody who can rebound the way that he can. And once again, we have a common theme going on right here. Three-point shooting, 32.1% from behind the arc. So another guy willing to fire it up when he gets daylight on the outside. So now on the other side of this break, John and I are going to recap last night's win over North Harden and a few other things as we are about six minutes away from tip-off here on GHP Sports. Oh, that's a bad call. That was a great call. That's the worst call I've ever seen. Great call. Horrible. A horrible call. Sports fans don't often see things the same way. Terrible call. That was a good call. But there's one call everyone can agree on. Call 811 before you dig. The free service that helps you avoid utility lines while you're digging. Know what's below. Call 811 before you dig. Safety! At Acadia Counseling, we offer a professional, down-to-earth approach for adults, families, couples, and adolescents who are looking for lasting results in a non-judgmental environment. Located in St. Matthews and offering telehealth straight to your phone or Wi-Fi enabled smart device, Acadia Counseling offers evening and weekend appointments. Give us a call or schedule from our website and create a brighter future for yourself or a loved one. Back at Spencer County High School, we're about uh, five minutes away from tip-off, John, and uh, talk about the Spencer County Bears last night. Scored a 76-48 victory over the North Harden Trojans. Fun field night here at Spencer County Gym, John. Uh, Luke Earhart was honored for scoring his 1,000th point of his Spencer County career before the game started. Only the 12th player all time to uh, put his name on that list. And uh, at halftime, had our homecoming ceremony. James Buchanan, Lorelai Cox voted king and queen by their classmates. And, uh, John, this one hurts my head. James is going to study nuclear engineering wow. at the University of Tennessee. <laughs> and Lorelai will be attending Western Kentucky University as a men- member of the honors program. Yeah. That sounds like two kids to me with a very bright future. Yeah, it is. I and mean, there's a lot of those around this school. I mean, it, it's, it's great to see the academics come out that come out of Spencer County High School. You know, we've obviously, you know, we support the athletics and, and what they're able to do. But so many of these kids, they're, they're such well-behaved kids. They do so well in class. They perform well, whether it be on the quarter of the field. And uh, it, it's really a lot of fun to be part of this community and part of this athletic program. Now, as for the game, uh, the Bears jumped out to a uh, 36-24 halftime lead. 
thanks in large part to the hot hand of Cam Cox in yeah. the first half. Oh, it was. And, you know, Cam, he was another one of those ones. He gets that little bit of daylight. You know, we talk about him and Luke Earhart. They're in the gym. They're in range. And, you know, for him to be able to score the 24 points he did in that game and, and four rebounds, four assists, he was just all over the court. And that's one thing we bragged about him on him before is not the three-point shooting so much as it is the rebounds and the, and the aggression of getting to the boards, extending possessions, or creating possessions for the Bears. Now, in the second half, the Bears turned up the wick on defense, uh, created 17 yep. second-half turnovers for the uh, North Harden Trojans, going on to the 76-48 victory. And uh, some of the stats from that game, John, uh, Cam Cox, 24 points, four rebounds, four assists. Luke Earhart, 22 points, three rebounds. Jonathan Combs, a double-double, 10 points, 13 rebounds. And some of these other players, John, that uh, you don't really see a whole lot of points scored by them. Yeah. So big in these games with the numbers that they still put up. But I kind of call them hidden stats sometimes because it's not the one everybody looks at. But uh, Jack Armstrong, nine points, five rebounds. Yeah. Bryce Rourke, starting guard, didn't score last night. Six rebounds, seven assists for Bryce. That's right. Drew Barron off the bench, five points, five rebounds, three assists. And and you could go on and on and on down that list because the bench is so deep for Coach Burns. This it year. is, and it gives him an opportunity in a lot of these games. A lot of these teams that Coach Burns plays, whether it be in the district, the region, or even just games they pick up on their schedule, you'll end up seeing – two or three or four players that are just absolute studs for those teams that hardly ever leave the court because that's their opportunity to win, where Coach Burns is able to run those teams a lot harder up and down the court because he has the fresh legs to bring in off the bench, and he's not losing valuable minutes because he's bringing in a lot of talent. And with the shorter bench that Gallatin County does have tonight, you're definitely going to see Coach Burns. He's going to run. He wants to to run in this game, so – as you can see, a total team effort there by the Bears last night and uh, going on to their 17th victory of the season. So we are going to step away for our national anthem and our starting lineups by our PA announcer, Mr. Right. Mr. Stephen Hill. Here and direct your attention to the flag for the playing of our national anthem. And now, for the nice starting lineups. First up, for the Gallatin County Wildcats. At forward, a six foot four inch junior. Number one, Eli Newman. At guard, a five foot 11 sophomore. Number two, Matthew Griffin. At guard, a six foot junior. Number five, Kellen Dossett. At guard, a five foot nine inch sophomore, number eleven, Ian Wilson. And at forward, a six foot one and a half inch sophomore, number twelve, Jonah Brinker. Head coach of the Wildcats, Vance Sullivan. And now for your Spitzer County Bears. 
at guard, a five foot eleven junior, number three, Kellen Marksbury. At guard, a six foot junior, number five, Luke Earhart. At guard, a six foot one inch senior, number twenty, Bryce Roar. At guard, a six foot one inch junior, number twenty four, Camden Carr. And at forward, a six foot four inch senior, number thirty, Jonathan Cole. Same starting five for Coach Burns as we expected. Kellen Marksbury, Luke Earhart, Bryce Rourke, Cam Cox, Jonathan Combs. For the Wildcats, it'll be Eli Newman, Matthew Griffin, Kellen Dossett, Ian Wilson, and Jonah Brinker. And at last update, the girls are tied at 43 at Simon Kenton in the final minutes of the game up there. So we'll try to keep you updated. We're getting text messages from family members that's there and and uh, hope the girls can pull that one out. And John, we're set for 32 minutes here. Yeah, I, my seat was still warm from last night's game when I got here. I mean, we're ready to go again. Ball tip controlled by Bryce Rourke. Galton starts man to man. Go down to Rourke in the corner. Bryce gets into the lane, loses the ball, picks it back up. Earhart, wing three, no good. Ball tapped out of bounds. I believe that's off Cox. That'd be. Gallatin County basketball. I want to take a moment just to uh, mention this is uh, Winter Officials Appreciation Week too, and I uh, want to make sure you know uh, officials. We might give them a hard time, you know, but these games don't happen without them, and, and we're we're happy to have them here, and uh, hope they continue to do a good job. Newman, swing the ball around. As yes, that's Griffin. It's the ball out to Brinker. Brinker loses the ball, picked up by Earhart. Luke hands off to Cox. Cox gets into the lane. Pump fake up with the left hand and in. Two nothing Bears, one minute in. Dribble handoff. That ball is in and out, rebounded by Marksbury. Kellen starts the break in the middle of the floor. Goes all the way into the basket, going to go up by himself. Up no good, rebounded by the Wildcats. Eli Newman with the board. Gives it up to Griffin. Griffin goes over to Dossett. Dossett surveying. Gets it back to Wilson. Wilson back to Griffin. Guarded by Combs. Bakes gets into the lane. Go. Shot into the lane is good. That shot by Ian Wilson ties it up at two. Nice. That shot by Combs is good. Dossett. Hands the ball off to Griffin. Gets into the lane. Pump fake. Turnaround fadeaway is no good. Rebounded by Combs. Combs gives it up to Rourke. Pushes it up to Marksbury. Go down low to Combs. Up underneath the basket. Right hand hook shot is no good. Ball's tapped out of bounds off Earhart. He'll go over to the Wildcats. Being over Over in the back. back. B. Spencer County basketball. Marksbury looks down low, goes top of the key to Combs. To Earhart behind the back dribble. Looking for Rourke, who's posting up. Bryce. Goes down low, tries to go back out to Combs, tapped out of bounds by Newman to stay with the Bears. (laughs) 
Combs, wing three, is short. Rebounded by the Wildcats. Push the ball up the floor. Get down low. That is Griffin with the three. In and out, no good. Ball tapped around, picked up by Brinker. Brinker gives it back to Dawson. Swings it back over the top of the key to Wilson. Wilson, guarded by Earhart, picks up his dribble, goes to Dawson. Dawson, left-hand dribble. Pushes Marksbury all the way down the lane. Takes the 15-foot jumper is good by Ian Wilson. Four to four. Rourke over to Marksbury. Combs down on the block. Reverse layup. He's going to pick up a foul. That foul is on number 11, Ian Wilson. That's his first and the team's first. Combs connects on the first free throw. And Jonathan makes them both, 6-4 Bears. Get into their 2-2-1. Two, two, Dossett, wing three, he's no good. Cox had his hands on it. It's going to be tapped out of bounds off of Brinker. Spencer County basketball. 340 left to go in the first. Gives it up to Cox. Cox fakes the three, gets into the lane. Nowhere to go. Goes down to Rourke, up off the glass and in. Nice move by Bryce Rourke to be able to cut down that lane, give Cam Cox an option. Defense was able to double down on him, making it difficult for him to get a shot. Griffin, top of the key. Bears still man-to-man. Now switched over to 2-3. That's a walk. Yep, good call. Drew Barron, Keaton Baird, and Jack Armstrong checking in for the Bears, replacing Cox, Combs, and Rourke. Like seeing Keaton Baird come in. I mean, this kid, if you have yet to see him play, he can jump as high as a Chinese weather balloon. I'm telling you, it is up there. He can go get it. It's unreal to watch him play basketball. You've been working on that one all day, haven't you? (laughs) (laughs) Earhart. Nice pass down low to Bear. Bear goes up, draws the foul on Newman. Be two shots for Keaton Bear. You like that one, did you? I, I did. <laughs> oh, goodness. First shot by Bear is good. Keaton makes them both. Bears 4-4 from the line, lead 10-4. Brinker yeah, gets tripped up by Marksbury. First foul on Kellen. Team's first. Cross-court pass. Pump fake, nothing there. Ball's tapped, going to go out of bounds. Yeah, it's going to be off Gallatin Kellen. basketball. But that's Kellen doing what he does, John. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's going to get after you. He's going to be a pest. <laughs> I mean, that's that's, that's what he is. That's the best way to explain him on defense. Brinker, nowhere to go. Finally gives it up. Now Griffin. Griffin. 
Back to Brinker, gets into lane, travels. He did. Bryce Rourke checking back in for the Bears, giving Marksbury a break. Burns does a really good job of rotating his guys. He does. And, uh, getting, getting that break for them that they need. Barry from the free throw line. Gives it up to Barron. Luke loses it. Picked up by Raggio. Griffin, nowhere to go. Goes out to Brinker. That shot is no good. We're going to get a jump ball called. Be Gallatin County basketball. Dossett gives it up to Brinker. 17 footer is no good. Rebounded by Bear, got way up for that rebound. Earhart gets into the lane, gives it up to Bear, nice pass. Yeah, that's a way to find your teammate right there. And Coach Sullivan, he's seen enough right now. 30 second timeout by Coach Sullivan. So far in this game, I mean, it's really been the tale of this game has been Spencer County's effort, and you already mentioned the fact Spencer County being able to bring people off the bench. You can see it very early in this game how much those fresh legs are affecting Gallatin County and what they're able to do on the offensive side of the ball. Of course, we talked before the game just how much Gallatin County likes to shoot the three, and, you know, looking at the stats, they average 9.4 three-pointers a game to Spencer County's 9.9, and they've actually got 206 three-point attempts to the Bears' uh, 638. So 602 to 638. I mean, you're talking a team very, very similar to with the outside shooting of Spencer County. And Spencer County so far being just busy enough on defense to be able to keep those shots from going up. Cox checks back in for the Bears, replacing Earhart. Earhart, the last starter to come off the floor here to get a break, and it's, uh, again, great opportunity. Only two starters on the floor right now for the Bears, so giving people good time to rest. 18-footer is no good, rebounded by Baird. Keaton running the break. Gives it up to Cox underneath for the left. Good look by Keaton Baird. Kept his head up, seen the floor well. Caught Cox cutting to the basket. Raggio. It's an in, that foul's going to be on the floor. I think they're going Griffin to get going to the basket. They're going to get Keaton Barrett, and they uh, they did have it as a shooting foul. It's going to be two team fouls already now for the Bears. And the first one is good. Lady Bears trail 46-44, 15.3 seconds left up at Simon Kenton. And Griffin makes them both. Rourke guarded by Raggio. Gives it up to Cox. Cam guarded by Dawson. Goes down low to Baird. Gives it back to Cox. Back nice cut. Back door. Drew Barron. Wow. 16-6, Bears lead by 10. Down to the final 10 seconds of the first quarter. Dossett kicks it out to Griffin for three. It's good. Long shot by Cox at the buzzer is no good, and that will bring us to the end of one. Your score, Spencer County 16, Gallatin County 9.
Dryer Vent Squad of Louisville reminds you that clogged or restricted dryer vents are the primary cause of dryer vent fires. Have your dryer exhaust vents inspected and cleaned by a professional at least once a year. Presented by the Dryer Vent Squad of Louisville. Dryer vent cleaning, rerouting, and repairing. Stay safe, save money, and time. 502-712-0333. DryerVentSquad.com. Dryer Vent Squad, we get the lint out. Serving Louisville and surrounding counties. Back at Spencer County High School, as you see a few highlights of the first quarter. Bears lead 16 to nine. A couple backdoor cuts that uh, worked well for the Bears there. Galton, look, you overplay that, you yeah. cut that back door. A lot of times that's going to be there for you. Yeah, and that's what it's doing. A lot of these times the Bears are getting into the lane. They're driving down in, drawing a double team. And, of course, if you're a double team, somebody's open. Spencer County doing a great job of recognizing that, getting that open person to be able to go down the backside and get those uh, those easy layups. I believe that is a final now from Simon Kenton. Simon Kenton, 47, Spencer County, 44. From the text messages I'm getting, I'll, uh, I'll leave them uh, alone, but it uh, looks like there was a little drama during the game. Rourke goes down low to Baird. Baird fakes right, goes up with the left hand off the glass, no good, gets his own rebound, tries to go back up, foul. Great job by Keaton Baird to stay with it. You know, you make, you take that shot, stays right underneath, gets position to be able to get that rebound, pick up the foul. That foul is on number 15, Kaysen Baker. That's his first, team's third. Bear makes them both. 18 to 9. Bears lead by 9. Dossett to Griffin. Guarded by Barron. Gives it up to Brinker. Back to Dossett. They run the weave up top. Dossett gets in the lane. Going to pick up a foul probably on Armstrong. I believe that's who they got. He's the one with the hand coming down. Yep. Yep. First foul on Jack Armstrong. Team's third. And Dossett will step to the line, 76% free throw shooter, and completes the three-point play. 18-11 now. Baird, top of the key. Looks back door. That Uh time's stolen away by Griffin. Griffin leads the break for the Wildcats. That shot is up no good. Tap back out to Griffin. Griffin. Into the lane, goes out to Dossett, open for three, air ball. Gets rebounded by Rourke, gets it out to Barron. Barron into the lane, goes out, Keaton Baird, corner three, it's good. Not something we usually see from the big man, but happy to have it go through. Dossett, he'll take that three. That's no good, rebounded by Baird. Keaton starts the break. Gives it up to Armstrong, in for the left. Another timeout by Gallatin County. 32nd timeout. That'd be his last 32nd timeout of the game. Little Spencer County on a little bit of a run here, up 23 to 11. Little shout out, buddy ours, Todd Mayer, up there in uh, Newcastle watching the game right now and uh, hitting me up here a text message and and, Todd, I'll be honest with you, it's not really cool to ask for a shout-out on the air, but even though I gave it to you, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. Spencer County now 8 of 16, 50% from the field so far here in the first half, 1 of 3 from long range. And for Gallatin County, they are 4 of 15 for 27%, 1 of 7 from three-point range. And, uh, one of three from long range, John. That's uh, that's very unlike 
Spencer County Bears. They, uh, <laughs> they're a team that, uh, on average, is making close to 11 threes a game, getting yep. up uh, getting up close to 30 a game, and only have three, and we're, you know, a couple minutes into the second quarter here. Baker gets it down low to Dossett, posting up on Baird. Tapped away, stolen by Baird. Good hands by Luke Earhart. Barron in the corner, walked, no call, gets into the lane. Shot is up and in. Nice job there by Drew Barron just to, to see what the defense was going to give him and take that opportunity to get to the hoop. Baker hands the ball off to Griffin. Guarded by Barron. Goes up. Left hand dribble. He just beat Drew to the punch there, John. Yeah, he did. Cam Cox is going to get that foul. Griffin will try to complete the three point play. 71% shooter, and he does. Marksbury out to Earhart. Corner three. No. Rolls off the rim. He tried to go in, John. Bounced off a couple times, but uh, Galton County goes up for the rebound, tips it out of bounds, and stay with the Bears. Drew Barron's going to get a little bit of a break. Done a great job out there, that, that, that little stretch. I mean, he's all over the place between rebounds, getting shots, assist. Baird again up with the left hand and in. Keaton Baird, 11 points already in this game. And keep in mind, folks, Keaton Baird comes off the bench. Griffin over the left side. A lot of dribbling, a lot of nothing, nothing nobody going anywhere here. Dossett. They throw that one away. Earhart had his hand on it. Tap out of bounds off of Luke. Luke not agreeing Wildcat with the ball. call, but from my point of view, it looked like a, a good call, but I wasn't wasn't really in a great spot to see it. Griffin off the pick by Newman. In the lane. Goes up with the left hand. That's a good move there. Good defense also. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, you sometimes you just got to say uh, good move. There. Yep. Bears lead to 10. He walked. He yep. Walked. Shuffled his feet. Twenty-seven, ten. Four Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Griffin goes to Brinker. Brinker gets in the lane. We're going to get a foul. I believe on Marksbury. That is. That'd be his second. Yep. And that's who it's on. Second foul on Kellen Marksbury. Team's fifth. Jonah Brinker will step to the line. 74% this year for the sophomore. Makes the first. And he makes them both. Cuts the lead to eight. Earhart, right hand dribble. Shot is blocked. Picked up by Brinker. To Dawson. It's clear, John, that they have a game plan of driving to the basket, try to get these Bears in foul trouble. Yeah. That's Cam uh, Cox. That's going to be his second foul. Two on foul. Cam. Sixteen foul. Dawson back to the line where he's – Made two of two now. 
Baird and Armstrong checking in for Earhart and Baird. Good minutes for Keaton Baird there, John. Like you said, 11 points, four rebounds, two assists yep. already in this game. Burns going to roll the dice a little bit. Cam Cox still on the floor with those two fouls. Nice Backdoor. look. Again, Bryce Rourke with the assist. Swing the ball around. Dossett, long three is no good. Rebounded by Armstrong. Gives the ball up to Rourke. Rourke to Combs. Back up top to Armstrong. Cox. Jack, wing three. at short. Gets his own rebound. Follows his shot. Back in for the left. Nice. That right. kids is why the coach says follow your shot. Yeah. Deflection by Rourke into backcourt. Griffin picks it up for the Wildcats. Gets into the lane. It's going to go out to the corner for a three. No good. Rebounded by Barron. Barron starts to break for the Bears. Goes over to Cox. Wing three is good. Bears push the lead to 13. Griffin, 16-footer, no good. Rebounded by Rourke. Too much one-on-one for the Wildcats, John. Yeah, and, and Griffin spending a lot of time. First layup these, by uh, Barron is good. Doing these little head fakes, and, and the Bears just not biting on them. That's eight now for Drew Barron. 19 points between Drew Barron and uh, Keith Barrett off the bench for the Bears, John. And that's what we were talking about before the game started, how – Coach Burns likes to be able to run teams, especially teams that don't have as much depth because he can pull these guys off the bench, get quality minutes from them, and always have fresh legs on the floor. Three by Dossett is no good. Rebounded by Rourke. Pushes the ball up to Barron. Barron back out to Armstrong. Bears will slow it down. Rourke to Armstrong, back to Rourke. Goes down low, Combs. Right hand hook shot, no good. Misses that one badly. Rebounded by Wilson. Dossett. They go into their weave up top. Shot that one behind the backboard. It's going to stay with the Wildcats somehow. Dossett looking to trigger in. Tries to get it into Raggio. He does get it. Back out to Dossett. Taken away by Armstrong. Gets it up to Barron. Barron gets tripped tackled. up. First foul on Reggio. Team's fourth. Bears will throw the ball in from underneath. Armstrong gets it into Earhart. Dribbles one time, 15-footer, no good. Rebounded by Combs. We're going to get a jump ball called. And it beat Gallatin County ball. ball. 59.3 left. Dawson crosses the timeline. Ball's tapped away by Barron, stolen by Combs. Gets it up to Rourke. Back to Barron. Goes up with a oh, shot. And it's Drew good. Barron just having a phenomenal first half for the Spencer County Bears. Ten points already for him. Raggio to the free throw line. Nobody guarding him. Takes the shots. No good. Rebounded by Newman. Back out to Dossett. He'll take the key. 
top of the key three, rebounded by Earhart. Luke pushing the ball for the Bears. Goes all the way into the basket, runs over a player. That's probably – his feet were moving, but that's probably a good call. First foul on Luke Earhart. Team seventh, player control foul, so there would be no free throws. Adam Medley going to check in for Bryce Rourke. Burns going to leave Earhart. Well, that's still his first. My fault. Griffin. Cross court pass to Dossett. Down in the corner, Raggio. Nowhere to go. Cut off by Combs. Griffin takes an off balance shot at the buzzer, and that's no good. And your score at the half Spencer County 38, Gallatin County 21. As we go down to Phillips, and he's going to have Coach Burns. All right, Coach, great first half. I feel like we had a ton of baskets off assists there, man. Yeah, For, yeah we moved the ball well. Our yeah. defense has been pretty good. Kind of, I feel like we've said this a couple times. Saturday coming off a big game, you know, just didn't want to be flat and good start. Definitely. Good half by Drew Barron as well. Yeah, I don't know how that layup went in there at the end, but hey. We'll take it. All right, there you go, gentlemen. Great first half. He walks you to the door, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, our score at the half, Spencer County 38, Galton County 21. John and I will be back with some stats and some halftime thoughts here in a minute on GHP Sports. The People's Bank is proud to be a sponsor of the SCHS Bears. The People's Bank is an independent local community bank dedicated to serving Spencer and surrounding counties. At the People's Bank, we are here to serve you with deposit accounts, mortgage loans, construction and land loans, as well as business and personal loans. The People's Bank is conveniently located with two locations, 23 West Main Street in historic downtown Taylorsville, and a branch at 5511 Taylorsville Road in Fisherville. Or you can visit us at our website, www.tpbtaylorsville.com. Banking excellence since 1903. The People's Bank, an equal housing lender, member FDIC. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, give me a call. Luke Penrod with United Realty of Louisville. My phone number is 502-639-7271, and feel free to look on my website, penrodrealtor.com, and let me help you find your dream home. Tonight's game is proudly sponsored by Titchener and Satterley, attorneys at law, Taylorsville, Kentucky. Curious what your home is worth? Visit brownrealty.com. Brown Realty, serving Spencer County and beyond for nearly 20 years. Brown Realty, your local realtor. REMAX Results is thrilled to announce the opening of a new satellite office in Taylorsville, Kentucky and the start of the Kelly Hubbock Real Estate Team. Kelly is very passionate about this community and the needs of its citizens and we're so proud of what she's accomplished so far and what the future holds for her and Taylorsville, Kentucky. Hi, I'm Kelly Hubbock. I have been a resident of Spencer County for a little over 10 years now. Uh, in addition to real estate, I serve as the president of the Spencer County Taylorsville Chamber of Commerce, and I can think of no better place to put down roots, both professionally and personally, than in Spencer County. Uh, the sheer beauty of the county alone is second to none, and the people are amazing. Uh, everybody knows everybody. It's very much a small town community feel, uh, and the neighbors will quite literally give you the shirts off their back if you need it. So I am honored to be a resident and a business owner out here, and I look forward to assisting the citizens of this community for years to come. Back at Spencer County High School, halftime here, and it is uh, Spencer County leads 38-21 over the Gallatin County Wildcats. Yeah. A little quick opportunity here to see the stats. Apologize for where it says North Harden. Obviously, we are playing Gallatin County, but the logo's right. We got the, we got the Wildcat logo up there. But anyway, 38-21 field goals, Bo. That's been something that it's been in the favor of Spencer County tonight, and we've noticed a pattern of that lately. Actually, Spencer County shooting 54% from the field 
and Gallatin County with 23% from the field. And then the three-point shooting for Spencer County, 33% to Gallatin County's. Uh, I would actually, yeah, I don't want to take my shoes off, so I'll scroll down. 8% from three for Gallatin County, a team that really does like to shoot the ball from outside. Rebounding, Spencer County leading the way 14-6. to six. And then assist. We've, we've talked about that a lot here lately too, Bo, just how good – Spencer County's been to be able to pass that ball off, to be able to find that open man and be able to get that shot and get those extra shots off. But nine to two, Spencer County leading the way in assist. And then when we bring up uh, another biggie for us, turnovers, of course, pretty close right now, four to six, four turnovers for Spencer, six for Gallatin County. Um, of course, four of the six turnovers for Gallatin County were steals. So Spencer County, good active hands and uh, doing what they can do to try to create some uh, some extra possessions. The biggest thing I take from that first half, John, 25 of the 38 points for Spencer County are points off the bench. Keaton Baird with 11, Drew Barron with 10, yep. and Jack Armstrong with four. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, you know, 25 of 38 Coming of off your the scoring. Bench. And that's, uh, you know, that's big, you know. Drew Barron, two or three times we've seen where he got the, you know, got the back door cut where he yep. was being overplayed outside. And uh, we do have a few replays of that, I do believe. But uh, nine assists on the, on the 15 made baskets for the Bears, as you see here. Look, I mean, you're talking about threading a needle, and I don't know how this goes in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was all the way up under the basket and had to reach back to get that one to go in. But uh, – they're a lot more Big. athletic than you and I are. That's yeah. that's how it went in. Just but. a little. <laughs> but still, you know, looking at a few of the other stats, you know, some team stats so far. Um, assist, you know, we talked about those nine and two. Free throw percentage. Right now, Spencer County, six of six from the line. Of course, that's 100%. Gallatin, eight of eight from the line for 100%. For both teams stepping up to the free throw line making those shots, making them count, because those are types of things that, you know, can really come back to haunt you if you if you struggle at the free throw line. You know, you mentioned some of the scores for Spencer County. Looking at some of the scoring for Gallatin County right now, uh, Matthew Griffin leading the way, 10 points, uh, one rebound, one assist for him, five points for Kellen Dossett, and that was one that we really talked a lot about early, you know, at the pregame where averaging 18.1 points a game, Spencer County held him to five points. Uh, He's three of three from the line, uh, no rebounds, one assist for him, but's turned the ball over three times. He's half of the turnovers that have been committed by the Gallatin Wildcats. Uh, Ian Wilson with four, Andrew Brinker with two, and that rounds out their scoring, and really, Coach Sullivan, other than the free throw line, other than charity stripe, really struggling to see the ball go through the hoop. Yeah, you mentioned the eight percent from long range, uh, one of twelve. And this is a team. This is a Gallatin County team that averages thirty-five point nine percent from three point for the season. Yeah. I mean, and then we even look at their uh, field goal percentage right now: twenty-three percent from the field. Gallatin averages forty-three point five percent. Normally, so Spencer County doing a great job. We've seen a lot of pressure on along the outside, you know, forcing problems for them, making it difficult for them to get open looks, to get these different shots off. And uh, the defense, it's just been, you know, suffocating for the Spencer County Bears uh, on these uh, Gallatin County Wildcats. Foul-wise, there was only four fouls called on the Wildcats in the first cor- uh, first half, so nobody in foul trouble for the Bears. There was seven. Kellen Marksbury and Cam Cox have uh, two apiece. Yep. And uh, we are just told that uh, the Lady Bears have picked up a game for Monday night. That game is uh, against Taylor County, who's the second-ranked team in the fifth region. Uh, they picked that, up that game. That game will be here at Spencer County High School. So, so will GHP Sports. At least that's the plan right now. That's yeah. the plans we're going to try to be. I mean, I'll, I'll admit there's there's a lot of moving parts behind me and Bo. And, you know, short notice like that can make scheduling difficult, but that is the plan right now is that we'll be here to bring you that game. But worst-case scenario, you know, if you're not sure, which I am seeing that, yeah, we're pretty confident at least that this, this will happen there a broadcast, but if you're not sure you don't want to take a chance, come on down here. You know, we love to see the stands packed, the fans in here. 
being rowdy for those girls. Those girls have had a great season so far this year and uh, hope that it can continue for them. So now what's that do to us, Bo? We got Monday night and Tuesday night. Yeah, that means uh, we have four games this week, and then uh, it's looking like four games next week yep. also. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So my wife is going out of town Wednesday, and I'm going to be gone Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, babe. <laughs> Spencer County leads here at the half, 38 to 21. And uh, both teams now back out on the floor, John, as we're getting ready to get started. And uh, Bears looked uh, really good. And even Coach Burns said going into the locker room there, he said, you know, after a game Friday night, you come here Saturday, you still want to be flat. Yeah. You know, you, you schedule these games because of the way tournaments are, are scheduled right. out. And uh, you want these back to back games during the season to get your team used to it. And uh, the Bears were definitely not flat coming out in the first half. No, no, they definitely feeling fresh, feeling good. Um, and once again, that's not just a credit to these starting five. It, it, it's a credit to the bench and the players that are coming off the bench and what they're able to contribute just to keep these legs fresh. I mean, last night we saw it a lot. A lot of people coming off the bench. Coach Burns uses that depth, use it well, uses it well to uh, – Keep those other teams running and wear them out. Starting five on the floor for the Bears. Cox goes down low to Combs. Combs on the block. Turn around, right hand hook shot, no good. Fighting for the rebound. Tapped out of bounds. B. Gallatin County ball. Brinker up top to Griffin. Look to Dossett. Bears kept him quiet in the first half. Dossett goes length, throws it off the uh, side of the backboard. We're going to get a foul it's called on the Bears. Earhart. It's going to be his second foul. Second foul on Luke. Team's first of the second half. And Dossett will step to the line. He makes the first. It's 4-4 four, four now from the free throw line tonight. Make that 5-5. Five five. Four. Over to Earhart. Nice, nice look, look down low to him. Yeah, Bryce couldn't Oops. handle it. Bryce goes back around, goes up with the right hand. That's no good. Rebounded by Newman. Brings the ball down. Bryce almost took that away. Griffin, cross-court pass. And Brinker gets into the lane. We're going to get another Spencer County foul call. That's going to be on Cox. That's his third. Three on King. Team second foul. We're going to get a 30-second timeout called by Coach Burns. And the Bears, seen about all he wants to see starting out this second half, John. Well, the Wildcats come out a little bit more energy than what maybe they would have had towards the start of the game and, and you know, really trying to run with us. And then, of course, we've always talked about Coach Burns with his with his depth and what he, how he uses his bench, that that's not something you necessarily see this early in the game, that that's something more along the lines of the fourth quarter where you're really getting them wore out to where, you, I mean, you can really take advantage of it. So, Keep in mind, these Bears did play a game last night. And so they're going to try to run with them, I know. They're going to try to do everything they can to get this team moving up and down the floor. But you got to start wondering about how fresh their legs are, though. Wildcats have played eight players. Although the majority of that starting lineup has been on the floor. That's the first missed free throw of the game. That by Jonah Brinker. He's 74% on the season. And he makes the second. Rourke goes out to Combs. Corner three is good. Oh. 
Bears now three of seven from long range. 41-24, lead by 17. Big surprise in this game so far, Luke Earhart yet to score. Blocked by Combs. Picked up by Cox. Long pass up to Earhart. Right-hand dribble. Luke goes up with the left hand, draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line and get two. I believe that's going to be on Dossett. Yep. First foul on Kellen Dossett. Team's first. And the first one is good. Drew Barron checks back in for the Bears. And Luke makes them both. First two of the game for Earhart. Griffin, top of the key three is good. Can't give him that kind of space. Matthew Griffin, the sophomore, shooting 39.8% from three-pointer. Those are the type of shots right there where they can climb back in this game in a hurry. Marksburg gives it up to Earhart. Luke into the lane, goes up with the right hand. It's good. He sees a ball go through the hoop, John. That, yep. that turns something on for him where he. I'm wishing <laughs> I would have said something earlier about him not having any points in this game because I, I think that's what, what might have fired him up a little bit. Another shot by Griffin is good. Earhart to Marksbury, swings it over. Barron, wide open corner three, air ball. Rebounded by Newman, gives it up to Dawson. Wildcats running the other way, spins into the lane, loses the ball, picked up by Barron. Oh, he gets foul. taken out. I believe that might be a clip, 15-yard penalty. <laughs> it's going to be on Brinker. First foul on Brinker, team second. Forty-five twenty-nine. Bears by sixteen. Armstrong checked in for the Bears. Earhart gets into the lane. Armstrong corner three is short. Ball's on the floor. Earhart dribbles, pull up jumper is good. Yeah, he's going to he draw a foul. foul. Fouls on number 15, Kaysen Baker. That's his second, team's third. Luke will step to the line, try to compete, complete the three-point play. And he does. Bears push the lead to 18. Nice hedge there by Combs. Giving Griffin some fits up top. Wilson. Nah, they're going to get, get Jonathan for the bump. First foul on Jonathan Combs. Third team foul. Griffin in the corner. Dribbles out and resets. Gets into the lane. Shot is up. No good. Ball tapped around. Brought down by Combs. Combs gets it to Earhart. Bears running. Armstrong in the corner. Drives the baseline. Back out to Combs. Bears swing the ball around. Rourke gets into the lane. Shot up. No good. Gets his own rebound. That's, that's no good. Tapped around. Rourke gets it again. This time he'll dribble out. Left-hand dribble, drives the baseline. That's up off the glass and in. Persistence That's right a, there from Bryce Rohr, going after those rebounds, continuing to keep the possession alive and getting the two. Two offensive rebounds for Rohr that time down the floor. A 
We'll get a timeout by Coach Sullivan. That has to be a full. That's all he's got left. That'll leave them with two. Spencer County still with four timeouts. And boys action, Grant County has defeated top 10 Great Cross in 61-55. That's a pretty good win right there. That's a good win for Grant County. That's a really good win. Yep. If you remember, uh, Great Crossing defeated Spencer County in the King of the Bluegrass tournament back early in the year. They had the uh, six foot eleven uh, Malachi Marino, John. He's uh, yeah, Bears just lost a that game, seventy eight sixty seven. I mean, it was and it was it was something that they really struggled with on that inside. And it, and you would anybody would. We have a lot of height on this team, but we ain't got that kind of. We height. ain't got that. No. So, any of you all have any uh, 610, 611 relatives? Yeah. Taylorville, Taylorsville's a beautiful community, I'm yeah. telling you. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you all know we're kidding. <laughs> we have to throw that caveat in there, don't we? Yeah. Baron, Earhart, Baird, Armstrong, and Rourke. In for the Bears with three and a half minutes left to go in the third. We have Dossett, Griffin, Raggio, Newman, and Baker for the Wildcats. Boy, it's quite a bit quieter in here tonight than it was last night, isn't it, Bo? And there's about a third of the crowd in here, too. Yep. <laughs> Roar gives it up to Earhart. Top of the key three. Off the back iron, no good. Rebounded by Baird. Baird back to Earhart. Goes up off the glass. That's no good. Rebounded by Newman. Griffin bearing on him. Bears go man. Three-point shot is up and good. By Griffin. Gallatin County trying to claw their way back into this game, down 15 now. That's 21 for Griffin. Earhart in the lane, up with the left hand, no good. Tap, up and in. Griffin, all the way to the lane, left hand up, no good. Rebounded by Armstrong. Baird down low. Barron off nice the glass look. and in. Good look by Keaton Baird. Pick up the assist there down to Barron. Yeah, and Drew Barron now 12 points so far on this in this game. Six of six from the field. Newman in the corner. Back out to Raggio. I apologize, six to seven from the field. He had missed that three-pointer earlier. Raggio in the lane, not there. Another three up, that's air ball. Rebounded by Armstrong. Earhart. Back out to Armstrong, he'll take the three, it's good. You got a six-five guy that can get a rebound, bring the ball up the floor and then be the trailer to hit the three from outside <laughs> like that. That's a good luxury to have if you're Coach Burns, and that kid's just a sophomore. Yeah, and that's where, like, Coach Sullivan's over there just wondering, what do I have to do, you know? I, I mean, all of them can shoot. Three-point shot by Griffin is no good. Rebounded by Rourke. Gets it up. Earhart, 25-footer. That's no good. Rebounded by Baker. 55 seconds left to go in the third. Griffin. Gets into the lane. Tries to go to Raggio. Throws it out of bounds. Marksbury and Cox coming in for the Bears. Replacing Rourke and Earhart. Marksbury between the circles. 
Calls out the offense, gives it over to Barron. Drew, back top of the key to Baird, over to Cox. Cox, give and go, tries to get it to Baird. We're going to get a foul. It's going to be on the floor. That's Ethan Alexander, first uh, minutes we've seen him in the game, John. Only senior on the team for the Wildcats. First foul on him, team four. Barron underneath, no good. Dossett over to Raggio in the corner. Gives it back to Dossett. Left-hand dribble, goes baseline, shots up over Marksbury and in. Ten seconds left in the third. Armstrong. Baird, three, air ball. Rebounded by Dossett. 75-footer is short, and that'll bring us to the end of the third. Your score, Spencer County 57, Gallatin County 37. We'll be back in a minute on GHP Sports. Did you know Heirloom Traditions Paint has a new store right here in Spencer County? You can get all of the all-in-one paint products here to help you update most every surface inside and outside your home, along with some other great gift ideas and home accessories. We'll soon be opening our brand new store, offering homemade fudge, nuts, and daily fresh-made local offerings. Heirloom Traditions is proud to be a sponsor of Spencer County Athletics. Located at 35 Progressive Drive, open Monday through Saturday. Visit our website at allinonepaint.com to learn more. Back at Spencer County High School, getting ready to start the fourth quarter. You see some replays there of the third, some highlights. Uh, Earhart, John, didn't score in the first half, uh, come out and uh, had nine in that third quarter himself. Yep. Uh, took the place of the the, uh, the bench scoring that the Bears had in the first half. Still the bench, uh, 30 of the 57 points on the board for the Bears. Still two big stories uh, to this game to tell. Spencer County rebounding, 23 rebounds to Gallatin County's 12 and assist. Spencer County with 12 assists, Gallatin County with four. Leading scorer, Kellen Dossett, with only nine right now, averages 18. But uh, Matthew Griffin making up for that with 21. Three-point shot up by Brinker is no good. Rebounded by Barron. Barron goes to Marksbury. Left-hand dribble down the baseline. Not there. Gives it up to Baird. Baird into the paint. Ball taken away by Griffin. Wildcats running. Two on two. He gives it to Dossett, who walks and uh, puts it up in the end. They're going to get a foul on Spencer County. I believe Drew Barron just picked up his first. Team's fourth foul. Dossett will step to the line. Complete the three-point play. 57-40. Marksbury. To Barron. Barron looking down low. Not there. Up top goes to Barron. Barron back door to Cox. Goes through his hands. Taken away by Griffin. Dossett dribbles, gets into the lane, shot is up, no good. Get another Spencer County foul. Jack Armstrong. Second foul on Jack, team's fifth. Dossett again, back to the free throw line. Makes the first. Seven of seven now, eight of eight. For Dossett from the line, now has 14. Marksbury crosses the timeline, guarded by Griffin. Tries to go to Cox, ball stolen away by Dossett. He'll go in, we're gonna get another foul on Cam Cox. Uh, and that's gonna I be don't number agree four. with that one either. That's four on Cam, team six foul. And Dossett again will step to the line. Takes a minute for those stats to reset through the system, folks. He's now nine of nine from the free throw line. Spencer County got six players on the floor. There we go. Yeah. 
57-44, what was 20, now down to 13. And Bryce Rourke throws it away. And Brinker in for the layup. Burns wants a 30. Spencer County getting a little sloppy, and Burns sees it. He's going to try to stop the bleeding as quick as he can. He's still got an 11-point lead, but, Bo, six minutes and 44 seconds, a lot of time to catch up. It is. It's a lot of time to catch up, especially the way – you know, we think this this part of the game, this is where the Bears are are, are better than most teams. They're wearing teams down, yep. and, and uh, this is where that starts to, uh, you know, you start to see it really on the floor, and it looks like it's had the opposite effect tonight, and it may be the product of, you know, playing last night and today, but that's something these guys are going to have to get used to because that's coming. It is, and that's the point of these games. We we talked about it last week with the, with the Lady Bears. And them, they had scheduled three games in a row, but the Monday night game at Marion County got canceled. Still did the Tuesday, Wednesday. But the idea behind that is is they wanted to play back-to-back-to-back. That's like them going to Simon Kenton today. It wasn't so much that uh, they really enjoyed the trip to Simon Kenton. The trip was the point. You know, they needed to be able to get on a bus, drive a long distance, and still be able to get off the bus and play. Spencer County and Simon Kenton are the two schools that are farthest apart in the state that are in the same region. Barron, pump fake, into the lane, down to Barron, up and in. Keaton Barron, 13 points for him now with that layup. Lead back to 13 for the Bears. Griffin. Tries to go baseline. Ball tapped, stolen by Earhart. Luke, head up. Gets the ball to Rourke. Bryce in the corner to Armstrong. Tries to drive yeah, baseline. That's foul on Alexander. Get a check right there. foul on Alexander. That'd be his second, team's fifth. I want to take a moment to remind everyone to stay with us after the game for the Kelly Hubbock coaches interview. And we will also have the Brown Realty player of the game. So stay tuned. Hear a little bit about what the players are thinking, a little bit about what Coach Burns is thinking, and also what's coming up. We'll get a hold, yep, on Brinker. That'll be his second. Team sixth. Next foul is going to put Spencer County in the bonus. Both teams are sitting at six, so uh, we're shooting free throws from here on out. Baird. Earhart pops out, gets into the lane. Tries to go down low. It shot's blocked by Brinker. Gives it up to Dossett. Dossett, cross-court pass to Brinker. Drives into the lane. Gets that one blocked. Gets it back. That should have been a jump ball. Now we're going to get a foul. Drew Barron. That's his second, team seventh. Brinker steps to the line, 74%. Three of four today. And the first one was good. Earhart tries to get in the lane, bumped. It's going to be out of bounds off of Brinker. Stay with the Bears. Earhart wanting the foul there. Rourke will trigger in. Baird down low. Goes to the right nice this time move. over Keep Brinker. There. I'm sure the him. scouting report showed that uh, Baird's lefty, and he goes back to the right, goes over Brinker that time with a little hook shot. Griffin, a lot of dribble, going nowhere. Raggio back to Griffin in the corner. It's at top of the key. Dribble spins into the lane. Griffin, top of the key. Three is no good. Rebounded by Baird. Baird, long pass out to Barron, up for the left. Wow. And Marksbury looking for a quarterback next year, right? right? <laughs> I mean, he put that ball on the money. Dossett's going to pick up another foul. 
So it'll be on Bryce Rourke. His first, team's eighth foul. Dossett will go to the line for the one in the bonus. He hits the first. Well, actually, this is a two-shot foul. I'm sorry. Cam Cox going to check back in for Drew Barron. Drew having a great game. Get a little bit of rest. Cam, remember, four fouls. Four fouls on Cam Cox. And misses the second. Another rebound, rebound by, by Baird. Cox looking to Baird. Nice pass to Combs. Combs spins around. Ball knocked away up top to Rourke. Rourke, backdoor cut. Earhart for the left. Nice look. Several times this game, John, the Wildcats have just overplayed the Bears on the outside. And that backdoor is kind of like the old Princeton offense. Earhart's going to pick up one. Third foul on Luke Earhart. Team's ninth. And Dossett will again step to the line. He's 11 of 12 there tonight. And he misses the front end. Rebounded by Combs. Gets it up to Cox. Cox wide open. Goes to Baird in the corner. Baird between the leg dribble. Goes up. Gets it knocked away. Ball's on the floor. Cox, wing three, goes down low, good look. And the first one there. (laughs) (laughs) Alexander's going to pick up another one. Yes, he is. Third, team seventh. Baird will step to the line to shoot two. As I mentioned earlier, Ethan Alexander, the only player, only senior on this team, He's averaging just 1.0 points per game. So not doesn't necessarily get a lot of minutes. And actually, according to the stats, has only played in five games. And so Coach Sullivan using him a little bit here. Obviously, he's got some guys wore out and needs to uh, have some fresh legs on the floor. Bear misses them both. The ball up to Brinker for three. That's no good. Rebounded by Combs. Gets it to Cox. Cox again. Slides to a stop. That could have been a walk. That could have been. Combs. Alexander's going to pick up another. That's That's going to be his fourth. That'll put Jonathan Combs on the line, shooting the one in the bonus. Be a timeout here by Gallatin County. That'd be a full timeout, John. That leaves them with one with 3.36 left to go. We go back and see some. Highlights here from the ball game tonight. This is the one where you know he's left-handed, but when he goes back to the right, that's something you're just not prepared for. No, it's not. Keaton Baird doing a great job in there tonight with not only his shooting, but also his rebounding effort. Uh, Keaton Baird, 15 points, eight rebounds. Two rebounds away from a double-double right now, but also, Bo, four assists for Keaton Baird. That's, That's an awesome stat to have with everything else. And, again, Keaton comes off the bench. Looking at some of the team stats right now, Spencer County uh, shooting the ball 50% from the floor to 27% for Gallatin County. Spencer County 31% from three-pointer to Gallatin County's 19. And then looking at the uh, free throws early in the game there at halftime, both of them were at 100% right now, both at 82%. Spencer County 9 of 11 from the stripe and Gallatin County 18 of 22. Three and a half minutes left to go. Bears up by 17, led by as many as 20 early on. Again, if you wasn't with us earlier, the girls lost today at Simon Kenton. And there will be a game that is added to the schedule against Taylor County for the girls. We'll have that Monday. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 715, folks. So come on down to the gym. And if if not, that loss hurts. You know, we had talked about the potential of a Spencer County one seed in the district with Anderson County, but they were tied in district play. And, of course, we'll remain tied. District play is over with for the girls. And so, with that said, Spencer County needed to do what they could to win out and also needed a little help from Anderson County if they could pick up a couple losses for the RPI to flip in Spencer County's advantage to get the one seed. And with that loss tonight, it's not likely that they'll be able to pull that off. Griffin, nice pass down 
low to Alexander. Cox into the lane. Baird steps out. Corner three. It's good. That's two three-pointers for Keaton Baird tonight. 18 now for Baird. Alexander going to pick up a foul probably on Combs. I believe you're right, Bo. And that is on Jonathan Combs. That's his second. Team's 10th. So two free throws the rest of the way for the Wildcats. And Griffin will step to the line, 71% on the season. He's three of three today, make that four of four. Marksbury checks into the game for Bryce Rourke. And Griffin makes them both. Cox, Earhart, three, no good. Ball tapped. It's going to go off Combs' hand, out of bounds. Wildcat basketball. As Drew Barron checks into the game for Luke Earhart. That ball right at the feet, stolen away by Barron. Keaton leads the break, gives it up to Combs for the layup and the foul. Another assist for Keaton Baird. Fouls on Brinker, it's his third foul. Team's ninth. And Combs completes the three-point play. Both teams will be shooting two free throws from here on out as they're both in the double bonus. Brinker looks for the handoff, gives it to Griffin. Griffin, three from the top of the key, very short. Rebounded by Combs. Combs to Marksbury, pushes it up. Baird goes in the corner. Cox back to Marksbury. He'll take the wing three. It's no good. Rebounded by Combs, goes out to Cox. Combs, top of the key. Barron. Barron drives into the lane, in for the layup. Nice job there by Drew Barron. Beat his man off the dribble, and, and there was just no catching up to him. That shot could have been a foul call. Rebounded by Baird. Gets it out to Cox. Cox had the three, doesn't take it. Goes to Barron, another side three. It's well short. Rebounded by Brinker. Gives it up to Dossett. Dossett gets in the lane. Shot is up and good. Timeout, Spencer County. So we got a whole new five coming in here. It's going to close the book on a lot of these boys. Kellen is going to stay on the floor. We have Adam Medley. Jackson Combs, Sam Cook, Carter Walters. Is that everybody? I believe it is. Walters, Medley, Marksbury, Combs, and Cook. Kellen running a point, picks up his dribble, gives it to Medley. Medley over to Cook. Carter down low on the block. Goes back out to Combs. Combs fakes the three. Goes baseline underneath. Corner three by Cook is no good. The ball's rebounded by Wilson. Wilson is all the way down. He's going to pick up a foul on Jackson Combs. Yep. First foul on Jackson. And Ian Wilson will step to the line. Or two. Makes the first. Again, a reminder, stay with us after the game for the Kelly Hubbock coaches interview and the Brown Realty player of the game. Misses the second, rebounded by Marksburg. 
Minute left. Combs goes to Kellen in the corner. Back down low to Walters. Medley, corner three, no good. Rebounded by Combs. Nice look, short by Medley, gets his own rebound. Don't draw the foul. Adam will get a chance to step to the line. Foul is on number 30, Zapote. It's his first, team's 10th. First varsity free throws of the year for Adam Medley. And the junior makes them both. 77-55, Bears by 22. 35 seconds left. Going to get another foul. This one on, I believe that's on Adam too. Yep. yep. First foul on Adam. And Wilson will step to the line. 53% free throw shooter. Misses the first. Misses them both. Rebounded by Zapote. Gives it back to Wilson. Wilson guarded by Cook. out, corner three, air ball. Carter had a hand on it, out of bounds, to stay with the Wildcats with eight seconds left. Callum Marksbury going to dribble it out to end the game. And that'll do it. Your final score, Spencer County 77, Gallatin County 55. The Bears improved to 18 and six on the year. And the next one up, John, top five in the state, North Oldham coming in here Tuesday night, uh, folks. I'm telling you. That's, that's going to be a big one. If you can't make it out here to the gym Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, we'll be here all three days. If you can't make it out. <laughs> yep. And Friday. So, uh four out of five days next week john yeah yeah it'll be a busy week but that's all right there's really i mean in all honesty bo and i love doing what we do here and and uh it doesn't bother us a bit to be at this game when they mentioned something about adding that game on monday night we were here there was there was no question about it so again if you can't join us monday night or if you can't make it monday night join us for the uh live stream of course we love to see people in here you know Stands were a little empty today. It was a little quieter today. If we can get some more people in here to try to uh, to hype it up a little bit, I know those girls would appreciate it. A lot of home games here down the stretch as these uh, coaches, they try to get in all they can, John, before uh, the season's in. In two weeks, we're playing the district tournament at right. Woodford County, and, uh, and you know, you got to get those, you got to get your teams ready. As John and I put together a few stats so we can talk to our players, plural, players of the game. Players of the game, yes. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Drew Barron and Keaton Baird off the bench tonight for the Bears. Yeah, both players, you know, coming out. We, we couldn't, couldn't give it to one and deny the other after the effort that both of those guys had coming off the bench, and it was just – it was phenomenal to watch him play tonight, you know, after having that game last night because both these guys, yes, they might come off the bench, but they're both guys that put in a lot of minutes, a lot of minutes for the Spencer County Bears, and uh, I'm sure was feeling a little bit of the layover from last night. Bears do put four players. In w. Well, let's go over our team stats here, John. Sure. You got your uh, turnovers there on the screen that we always like to look at. Both teams fairly well took care of the basketball tonight, nine turnovers for the Bears and 11 for Gallatin County, eight yep. steals apiece, two to two blocks and, and uh, for Gallatin County, one for the Bears. 
As you see the score there, 77-55, Bears 29 of 61 from the field tonight for 48%, 5 of 19 from three-point range. That may be their lowest three-point uh, total of the be. year at, uh, at five three-pointers made. Uh, that's 26%. Mm-hmm. For the Gallatin County Wildcats, they shot 15 of 55 tonight, John, for 27%. Four of 23 from long range for 17%. And uh, individually, we'll start with uh, Gallatin County. Leading scorer tonight, Matthew Griffin with 23 points for him. Two rebounds, two assists. And Kellen Dossett ended up getting his average job, but he got it via the free throw line. He He ended up uh, 19 points on the game, 11 of 13 from the line for Dossett to give them two players in double figures. Other yep. scores for the Wildcats include Ian Wilson with five, Andrew Brinker with six, Ethan Alexander with two, and that'll wrap up the scoring, 55 points for the Wildcats. For the Spencer County Bears tonight, four players in double figures, led tonight by Keaton Baird off the bench with 18 points, nine rebounds, five assists for Keaton tonight. Yeah, great game for him. And then uh, also off the bench, second leading scorer tonight, John, is uh, Andrew Barron with 16 points tonight. And uh, other we, scores in double figures, Jonathan Combs with 12, here. Luke Earhart with 11, also scoring Adam Medley had two, Armstrong with seven, also off the bench, Bryce Rourke with four, Camden Cox with seven to give you 77 for the Bears. So, uh Guys, yeah, we'll have to just they're going to share. You. They're going to share the microphone. I'm going to have to scoot way back for yeah. this one. Then. If you want to slide down, Keaton. See if we can get you both in the shot this way. 77 points tonight, guys, scored by the Spencer County Bears, and 41 of them came off the bench tonight. You two were the lead, two leading scorers tonight. We appreciate you. You're our, our Brown Realty players of the game. Keaton, 18 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Drew Barron, uh, 16 points, two rebounds, two assists for yep. you, Drew. A lot of backdoor cuts tonight. They overplayed yep. you on the outside. You just seen that was going to be open? Yeah. Uh, we have a special play call, 55, with a double back cut, and they overplay you just back cut. And uh, I saw it was open, so I just kept doing it. It was there all night. And uh, Keaton, strong performance for you. I really like probably – the best one I liked all night. Everybody here at the scouting reports. Pass. Yeah. The yeah. T- <laughs> well, the first thing the first thing I said was, you know, Coach Marksbury, we just had a senior graduate yeah, we here. Did. <laughs> Quarterback. Play it. <laughs> there you go. But uh, I, I like the one. The scouting report always said, you know, you're left-handed. Everybody knows that when you're coming in the game. You, you fake to the left, you come back to the right for the little hook shot tonight. I, I really like that one, too. And I really yeah. like the fact nine rebounds, and not just the nine rebounds, five assists. Doing a great job finding everybody out there on the court. And, you know, not only the leading score tonight, but to be able to do that to help your teammates and both of you all coming off the bench the way you did to perform. You know, was there any sort of a little bit of a layover or whatever? You know, the game last night, a lot of energy. Were you guys, how were your legs today? Uh, we weren't really. I mean, I'm tired now. This was the first time that I've ever actually drunk, like, the whole water bottle that <laughs> they have. So I knew, like, that I'm tired. I knew out there on the floor that I was tired. But. We weren't really tired. We knew that it was just another game to come in and play. Well, speaking of another game, next week, Tuesday, you got uh, one of the top ten, top five teams in the state, North Oldham coming in here. Uh, Been a lot of hoopla about them, played in a couple big uh, uh, tournaments uh, earlier in the year. But uh, you guys may be playing some of your best basketball of the year right now. Yeah, they're pretty good, but that would be a huge win. Uh, Burns keeps talking about that if we beat them – We'd be tied in the region for the most wins this year, like in our region. So uh, that'd be a pretty nice accomplishment that he wants to get done. So we'll try to get it done. And now, Drew, back to the night a little bit. You know, um, I don't know. Did you feel a lot of pressure? I know Cam got in foul trouble pretty early and, you know, even finished the game with four fouls and trying to rotate people in. I know we know Burns likes to run teams because he has the depth of you guys coming off bench, but had a little, probably a few extra minutes on the court. Did you feel that pressure at all tonight while he was out there? Uh, no, I wouldn't say I felt pressure. Uh, I'm just playing my role. Everybody has a role in this team, and uh, if I have to come off the bench and play some extra minutes, other people are in foul trouble, I'll do that. I'll just play my role. Well, great job, guys. We appreciate both of you all coming up here. Proud to have you guys up there. And I tell you what, it's 
I'll be honest with you. It's not often that we have one player that comes off the bench up here, but you know, also to have two. You guys did a great job tonight. Look forward to watching you guys play against North Oldham. Thank you. Keaton Baird and Drew Barron are co-Brown Realty players of the game. And uh, we'll get Coach Burns up here real quick in the uh, Coach John Howie Memorial recliner. <laughs> You got us. Go. Coach, good win now. That's now, uh, I think it's, what, six in a row? I think uh, I think. I don't know. Was Brady me. would know. He was telling me in the <laughs> car, but to be honest, I wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think that's six, six in a row, in a row. now for, since the Collins loss now. But tonight, your bench, 41 of your 77 points coming off the bench tonight, led by those two that were just here, Keaton Barrett, Drew Barrett. Yeah. We've been wait, uh both of them, it's good for Keaton because he probably didn't have the greatest game last night and bounced back. So it's really good to see. And Drew, yeah, I mean, hey, we were able to get him out in transition. and He got that back door cut quite yeah. a bit yeah, tonight. Yeah, I can't believe he just told everybody what that play was. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to change that yeah. now. You're, we're going to make some adjustments. He's learning. It's first time up here. <laughs> But, all the kids got it on the TV down there, and they're losing their mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, in, in all seriousness, though, of course, you always worry about that little bit of a layover coming off a game yeah. as big and as emotional as it was for homecoming last night. I, I'm not going to say it was officials. I'm not going to say it was being tired, but a little sloppy tonight yeah, on we the were, We were, yeah. And that, and we were reaching. That's, you know, and that's the best way to describe it. We were a little, we were a little sloppy, but uh, – I thought the same kind of thing. I thought offensively, like I've always thought sometimes when you're flat, like the ball movement's not there, it kind of becomes a little selfish, like everybody's trying to get theirs. And at least that part we were, you know, we were moving it. And yeah, 17 assists. a little bit better. 17 assists compared to five for Gallatin County. Yeah. But, but the foul situation was something that we were talking about during the it's, Of course, it's not very often you see Cam have four fouls in a game, but actually – only two players on the roster, Car- Carter Walters and Sam Cook, were the only two that did not register foul. fouls tonight for you. And so you knew something fishy was going on, whether it was they were tired or, tired or yeah, not. Yeah, we were, we were just getting beat off the dribble way too easy. And they, they look, they their guards, you know, we may be overstressed that they were good shooters, so we were getting out and picking them up for at least half court, and they were just able to blow by us. But, yeah, a little mm-hmm. sloppy. So, uh, Tuesday night, big one coming in here. Yeah, yeah, real That's, big uh, game. Uh, one of the better teams in the state. Uh, mm-hmm. They've had a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of people talking about them all year long. But uh, you guys may be playing the you – say, like you said, a little sloppy, but uh, seem to be playing good basketball yeah. right now. I yeah. mean, it, uh, it, it should be a good one. Yeah, they're really good. They return everybody from their regional championship mm-hmm. team and – we saw them the King of Bluegrass and did really well, and they played really well in the Lexington Catholic tournament. And so they got they got a really good group, really well coached, and it'd be they, good. It'd well, be they a good. were runner up in both of those, wasn't they? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so it'd be a good. It'd be a good test. Last two weeks, you know, get some quality competition. So it's. Coach, you coaches look for that t- this time of year, don't you? Just try to, yeah, I know we, Coach Howie added a game for Monday night. Yeah, and. and um, we it kind it kind of got messed up with COVID when we had to schedule with COVID. We kind of the way that got flopped. Like we didn't really think last year was really, you know, we like we picked same thing as hat. We picked up one like the last day of the, of the year yeah. at Camelsville, which was good for us. But um, so this year it's been we, it's a lot better. Like we're traveling to Walton on Friday will be a big one, and obviously Tuesday. And so yeah, these last last four, are, you know, lot stiff competition which is which is what we need because and you mentioned that stiff competition you're talking about a north oldham team mm-hmm. being what they are i mean let's be honest we're the number one seed with a number playing a number right. four seed at, to, yeah. to open the district tournament the number four seed that's ranked in the state in the yeah. top 10 of the state and i mean so you know the the level of competition that that the bears are, are set to fi- to face as they finish out the season i mean you need that preparation yeah, time. absolutely you know and like even tonight, you know, they were they they got in the passing lanes and kind of got aggressive and and like you know that's I mean, Collins is just so physical and athletic and you know 
That's why sometimes, like, maybe we think there should be a foul call. Mm. I love it right now. You know, look, hey, you're not getting bailed out because guess what? Like, you're, you know, it's going to be a lot tougher come yeah. two weeks. So <laughs> That's right. Well, Coach, we'll let you go and uh, let you get uh, get out of here a little early tonight. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. All right, thanks, got, guys. Thanks a lot, Coach. Coach Jason Burns and his Bears improved to 18-6 and six on the season with a big one coming in here Tuesday night, John. And uh, like I said, we'll be here on GHP Sports Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. If you can't uh, make it out to the gym, by all means, check us out right here on GHP Sports. Every night we'll be starting – Right around 7.15. Yes, we will. In that neighborhood for the pregame show. Game starts at 7.30 all four nights. So, uh, John, a good win here by the Bears good tonight. Win. Uh, Been a good week. Yeah. We've had a good week this week, four games this week. And, of course, Coach Howie, uh, apparently he appreciated that because he made sure we're doing four games next week too. So, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> But big night for the bench tonight for the Spencer County Bears. 41 of the 77 points scored tonight coming off the bench for Coach Baird. And the Bears go on to win 77 to 55. That's all we have here on GHP Sports. We'll see you Tuesday night as the boys take on North Oldham here on GHP Sports.